Hello to all those tuning in. My name is Adrian Arias. I'm a PhD student in Manny Azizi's lab at UC Irvine. And today I'm gonna to be talking about my recent work on alligators walking. So this is an alligator walking a relatively constant velocity. And superficially, they may look like a lot of other four-legged walkers out there. But alligators and other sprawlers like them experience a lot of movement and forces outside of the parasagittal plane during walking. Despite this, they have very similar limb muscle anatomy as most other quadrupeds. So what we want to know is whether they're using the same limb muscle mechanics as other quadrupeds during walking. To do this, we train five juvenile alligators to walk a steady state speed across a force plate and high-speed cameras. We constructed link segment models for both the hind limb and forelimb. And we modeled each segment within those uh, models as solid cylinders. So those are the equations for moments of inertia. And segment masses were estimated based on cadavers. What we're seeing here are the actual trials that were analyzed via inverse dynamics. And when we do that, we get joint power patterns that look like this for the hind limb on the left and for them on the right. And both in these representative trials and full data, we see that proximal limb joints uh, represented in black um, experience the highest power during stance phase of walking, uh, followed by distal limb joints in uh, various colors. However, when we normalize these values to the functional group mass at each joint, uh, we reveal that ankle and elbow extensors perform the most mass-specific power um, and that extends out to patterns of work when we take the time integral of those power curves. So what our inverse dynamics tells us is that proximal limb joints primarily do pro power walking in alligators, but ankle and elbow extensors perform the most mass specific power. And this is the result that really interests us because we know that we could characterize distal limb muscles in situ. So if the ankle and its elbow extensors um, are serving similar in vivo functions like their power curve suggests, we would expect them to have similar proper, um, passive properties. So we took representative muscles from each functional group um, and we characterized them in situ. We got active and passive force length curves. We plotted those passive curves together once we normalized them to uh, optimal force and optimal length. And we log transformed that data so we could compare statistically. And when we compared them with an ANCOVA, uh, we see that the slope of triceps is significantly steeper than the slope of the gastrocnemius, which suggests that that muscle is stiffer um, despite them um, having similar inverse dynamics results. We plan to follow this up with uh, in vivo measurements of muscle fascicle length and activation timing during walking. But for now, what we can say is that alligators, although they walk a little differently than other quadrupeds, they may still be using distal limb muscles to transfer energy from proximal um, limb muscles. These are the main points of my poster, but there are some details on the kinetics and kinematics I didn't present on. But feel free um, to catch me on Slack or Twitter or anywhere you can um, if you want to discuss those. These are my acknowledges and my contact info. Um, and thank you for listening.